A rather shocking article came out in the British Medical Journal this February of 2012 showing that there's a three to five time increase for early death and a 35% increase in the incidence of cancer if you use a hypnotic such as Restoril, Ambien, Lunesta, Sonata, and some antihistamines. That's unbelievable. And even more shocking, there are 19 additional articles that show uh, that there is an association with increased death. The association is not necessarily causal, but it's something that certainly should perk up your ears because it could account for as many as 300,000 to 500,000 deaths every year. This is stunning information. We tend to take pills that we use for things like sleep or stress to be just okay to do. And we need to look at some of the associated problems that we get into when we take these kinds of hypnotic drugs. For example, there could be an increased risk because of more auto accidents and more falls and worsened sleep apnea. And the other thing that's possible is that maybe people who are on hypnotics are sicker. Uh, but still, these numbers are stunning. We look at the fact that 6 to 10 percent of the adult population uses these drugs for sleep. And this was done on a study of 10,000 people uh, who were taking these drugs and 20,000 people who were controls and studied over two and a half years. It's even more impressive. You look at the fact that 18 pills a, a year for a whole year increase the risk of death by 3.6 times. If you took 18 to 130, 132 pills, it increased it by 4.4 times. And if you use more than 132 pills, it increased it up to 5.3 times. So there's a linear relationship to the amount of pills that you take and the risk for developing things like cancer and for developing problems uh, with just overall mortality. Further, we should know that the best treatment for people who can't sleep is to find out why they can't and to try and give some kind of treatment for it. So cognitive therapies are far much better than what our psychiatrists and a lot of doctors are doing today when they're looking at psychopharmacology rather than trying to find the underlying cause. This is a, an amazing article that should wake up everybody about the use of pharmaceutical drugs in general. We don't have the kind of data that we should have to try and find out what the side effects and complications are because let's face it, the purpose of pharmaceutical companies for the most part is return on investment. And that's what happens uh, with, the, with any kind of business that's oriented more towards money than it is in service. And when you see the lack of amount, uh, lack of good data that's available for a lot of these studies that are published by the pharmaceutical industry, it's no surprise that sometimes it takes up to 50 years to take a drug off the market because we just didn't pay attention to some of the data that we could have, or perhaps some of this data wasn't even shared that was, uh, that was available to the pharmaceutical industry. So when we look at the fact that sleeping pills are associated with an increased risk for death and cancer, Keep it in mind that that may be the tip of the iceberg. Take a careful look for the use of any drug that you use because there are safer ways that we should always start with to begin with lifestyle, non-invasive therapies, supplements and herbs, and then finally, the use of medications.